Hi everyone, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and in this video I'm going to be showing you the SynScan hand controller for the Starseeker 3s, how it uh, works, what you can do with it to find things in the night sky. First, uh, two uh, tips to make uh, everything run very smoothly. First off, your finder scope has to be dead on aligned with the main scope. You can't just put this on and expect it to be pointed at the same thing. So do it the hard way the first time. Point your telescope at a building, at the corner of a building or a tree, uh, centered in the eyepiece, and then use the adjustment screws on the finder scope to get it dead centered there. It'll make life a lot easier later on when you're doing the initial star alignment. The other thing I wanted to mention is not to move the telescope by hand. While you can move it up and down uh, without using the hand controller, if you try to do that side to side, you can actually damage the gearing inside. So do not move it at all side to side. And there's really no reason to move it by hand up and down either. If you do move the telescope up and down by hand, the computer won't know you've moved it and the computer alignment is shot and you'll have to start over again. So those two tips, uh, make sure you follow them and everything will go very smoothly. So once the Star Seeker hand controller is aligned, there's many things you can do with it. If you get out to the main menu, uh, just look at the buttons on the bottom. The tour function, if you don't know what to look at, if this is your first night out and you've never had a telescope before, the tour button is your friend. It will suggest all sorts of different objects in the night sky based on the time of night and your location and show you a, a, a wonderful assortment of objects without having to figure out, looking through books, what you're going to look at. The next most used button uh, would be the planets. You hit the planet button and then you can scroll through using the up and down arrow keys down here on the bottom through the list of planets that are available to you that night. Uh, it will only list out planets that are up. So let's say Jupiter hasn't risen yet. It's not going to be in the list. So you'll know that you're not missing something. So you hit the uh, planet button, you select Jupiter, for instance, and you hit enter, and it'll ask you if it wants to go to it. Uh, it will robotically go to, center it, and then continue to track it through the night sky. The next most used buttons are the database buttons, the four, five, and six, the Messier, the NGC objects, and the IC catalog. Messiers are by far the most um, easiest to look at objects because they're the brightest, right? There's 109, 110 of them. And you can scroll through the list and select the object that you want to see. The NGC and the IC catalog are uh, more objects, actually thousands of objects. Uh, some of them can be fairly faint. So if you're using a smaller telescope, like say the 90 millimeter Mac, you might want to stay away from those buttons at first and stick with either the planets or the Messier objects. If you want to slew the telescope around manually uh, without the computer finding and centering the object for you, you can use the arrow buttons up on top. In order to use them successfully, the rate button should be employed. Press rate, it will give you a uh, speed setting from one to nine. Hit enter, and then the uh, arrow buttons will move at that appropriate rate. Speed seven, eight, nine are really fast, and then the lower speeds are for centering objects. The user button is for recalling um, common objects that you like to visit time and time again, and you don't want to either remember their names or uh, you just wanted to set something as a user object. So press the user object, you can set it, assign it a number, and then uh, it will save even after you power off the telescope and you can come back to it later using the same button. The utility button gives you all sorts of different selections from changing the contrast of the LCD screen to identifying some object that might be near your field of view. All right, well, there you have it. Those are the most used functions of the hand controller for your Star Seeker 3. We hope you enjoy your system once you get it, and uh, thank you very much. Clear skies.